So next, our next speaker is Barbara Troitlein from ETH Zurich in Switzerland. Um, so Barbara, um, I'd like to welcome you to share your slides and tell us about tracing and perturbing lineages during human brain organoid development. Thank you very much, Gary. I hope you, you see my slides, yes. So yeah, it's my pleasure to present our work on tracing and perturbing lineages uh, during human brain organoid development. We are very excited about organoids. Um, they were mentioned in the, in the previous talks already, since they can model human development in the dish. And um, by doing so, we can actually model the, the development of any specific individual in the dish, we can perform time course measurements for the same individual. Um, these organoids are genetically tractable, so we can perturb them and we can control the environment they grow in and we can perform high throughput screening. And so this makes these organoids a very exciting uh, human model system to complement the primary developmental cell atlases um, and with, with organoid data. And so I want to uh, focus today fully on brain organoids, cerebral organoids, um, and in the past we have used high throughput single cell transcriptomics to profile the development of these organoids over time. And what we could show is that uh, from an initial very homogeneous pluripotent cell state, um, the, the, these cells move through different progenitor states and then give rise to different neuronal populations. Um, in that, that reflect neurons in different regions of the human brain. So we have excitatory neurons in the human cortex, we have inhibitory neurons um, in the ventral telencephalon, the, the ganglionic eminence, and then we also have uh, neurons developing of the deencephalon, the mid and the hindbrain. And today I want to talk about two projects that um, try to go, uh, that, that extend this previous work, simply profiling transcriptomes, where we, in, in the first part, um, now go into gene regulatory mechanisms and we try to infer and perturb uh, sulfate regulomes during brain organoid development. And I want to already here acknowledge uh, two fantastic PhD students that have um, done this work, Sophie Janssen and uh, Jonas Fleck. And in the second part, part, I want to present a bit more shorter um, uh, our new tools that we've developed to directly measure lineage um, relationships uh, paired with single cell transcriptomics in cerebral organoids. And here, this has been really great um, teamwork by four uh, people in the lab, um, Chi Song He, Ashley Maynard, Tobias Gerber, and Akanksha Jen, and I already want to acknowledge them here. So let me start with the first part, where now we wanted to go beyond the simple transcriptomic profiling, and we wanted to uh, also uh, measure um, chromatin accessibility over human brain organoid development in order to get at gene regulatory uh, networks. And so we generated a new data set where we uh, have paired single cell RNA-seq and single cell attack-seq measurements for organoids from four different lines um, over a dense time course of early uh, brain organoid development. And you can see uh, the embedding here we actually um, find the matching of RNA and the tag. We create meta cells that contain both modalities and then integrate also the lines and time points. And now um, we have a very dense sampling of these very early states that cells go through as they start to differentiate into the different neuronal uh, cell types. And we have expression accessibility and uh, can also um, quantify transcription factor binding motive abundances. And so if we look at the accessibility, we can actually uh, see that early on in the pluripotent cells, accessibility is highest. And as the cells uh, move through development and start to restrict their fate and differentiate, uh, accessibility becomes lower and lower. And we can identify very specific um, regions of the genome that are accessible and are um, acting as enhancers uh, during the different stages of development, including patterning, um, as well as um, neuronal, uh, neuro, neuropogenital cell uh, differentiation and, and uh, neuronal differentiation. And so um, since we cover this interesting and exciting time uh, period of fate specification, we um, wanted to reconstruct the trajectories and really identify the bifurcations that are happening here in, in, and the fate decisions. 
And here's a pipeline that we use to, to do that. And, and just looking at this uh, output, which is a um, graph abstraction of the data, where we can identify that there's an early branching of neuroepithelial cells into non-telencephalic and telencephalic progenitors, and then a later branching uh, of telencephalic progenitors into dorsal and ventral telencephalic uh, cells. And so what we wanted to do now using this uh, highly um, high dimensional data from the two different modalities is to uh, build a, or infer a gene regulatory network that underlies regional fate specification in these organoids. And for that, uh, Jonas actually uh, developed a new framework that he calls PANDO, um, where we, um, that is based on a generalized uh, linear model. And the different aspects that go into this is um, the accessibility of, uh, of, of chromatin, also the, um, the existence of, of transcription factor binding motifs in these regions, the abundance of uh, transcription factors, the expression level of transcription factors, as well as uh, the abundance of target, uh, uh, target genes. And so all together, um, and actually also considering um, conservation known cis regulatory elements and, and using transcription factor binding sites predictions, um, we can um, establish a gene regulatory network from this uh, paired data. And so here you can see the GRN for, for, these, for this data on human brain organoids. And it, overall, we see, um, you know, TFs. So this is just showing the TFs. Each TF is connected to a whole regulome that, that uh, includes the other TFs and downstream genes, uh, non-TF downstream genes. And you can see generally we have pluripotent uh, uh, TFs here. Then we go through neuroectoderm and uh, neuroprogenitor cells, and then we see um, different TFs that are quite specific to ventral telencephalon, dorsal telencephalon, as well as non-telencephalon and mesenchyme. And so what we wanted to do uh, now next was to actually perturb this network and understand what really the role is of these different transcription factors. And we wanted to use a multiplex approach, uh, a higher throughput approach, uh, not going gene by gene. And uh, what we did was uh, to use the CropSeq approach where we targeted 20 uh, transcription factors that each has a very uh, specific expression during cortex development, not just in the organoid cortex, but also the primary human cortex. You can see the transcription factors here. And then we uh, infect um, inducible Cas9 IPS cells uh, with lentiviruses that contain three guides per gene. We make mosaic brain organoids and then we do single cell RNA seq and amplicon sequencing to measure um, the transcriptomes, but also the abundance of the guides and, and detect the guides in the cells. Then we move on to do uh, analysis of both uh, fate changes. What is the fates that emerge? Are there changes in the abundance of fates? And also state changes. Are there um, deviations from the normal uh, state that are um, that are manifested by differential expression? And here I go very fast over this, but uh, we see um, a lot of guides in all these cells, and um, we can look at composition changes. And just highlighting one gene here, GLE3, that very specifically leads to enrichment of the dorsal uh, lineage and deple uh, depletion of dorsal lineage and enrichment of ventral lineage. And we followed up on this by generating isogenic uh, knockout lines for GLE3 and control lines, grow organoids and perform single cell transcriptomics at two months. And what we found was that indeed a uh, knockout of GLE3 leads to a full lack of, of the cortex. So we can confirm um, the, the finding in this multiplex experiment. And moreover, what we wanted to do is now really look into the regulome that um, defines the dorsal ventral patterning of the telencephalon because we see that this is uh, perturbed um, when GLE3 is knocked out. And what we did here was to choose the time point where really this fate decision is, is, is made, uh, grow organoids uh, from control and GLE3 knockout lines, and then do single cell multi -ohm. so for the same cell measure RNA and attack um, in, from these organoids. And what we can see is that we see a lot of uh, um, regulatory regions that are differentially accessible, nearby peaks that are differentially expressed. Um, and when we um, overlay our, uh, our perturbation measurements, the differential expression we measure onto the 
subnetwork of the GLE3 transcription factor from our GRN, we can see that this the inferred direction from the GRN is highly uh, consistent um, with the measurements of, of DE that we have. And so this shows that our GRN is really meaningful and it also now reveals the gene regulatory network or the regulon that, that, um, is, um, that is downstream of GLE3 and that controls dorsoventral phase specification in the telencephalon. And I'm running out of time here. I will go very fast over the second part. Um, I should mention this first part. It, it's a, a preprint that actually came out just today. So you can check it out more in, in that preprint. The second uh, part, also a preprint that was published last year, um, where we developed a new tool to directly measure lineage relationships in cerebral organoids. And this tool is called iTracer. What we do is on one hand have barcoded GFP in the iPS cells, uh, where from day zero, we, we record a lineage. And then in an inducible manner, we can um, introduce a second lineage mark by uh, targeting Cas9 to GFP and introducing SCARs. And so then um, we have a two, uh, two level or two channel recorder here uh, where we can record lineages at two time points. How does this look? Um, so here you can see things are in a seq data, um, a transcriptome embedding, um, where you see all the different fates that emerge. Again, the major branches, telencephalon, deencephalon, mesencephalon, and rhombencephalon. And uh, we can now, in addition, infer these uh, whole organoid uh, lineage um, maps where we can uh, measure barcode families that um, mark all the cells that derive from one cell, one original cell in the embryoid body. And then we have scar family that mark uh, a family of cells that derive from one cell at the time point of scarring. And um, we use this um, tool now to analyze more of uh, the lineage relationship between the cells during organoid development. And what we could see is that there is an, uh, there is an enrichment of barcode families in different brain regions. So for example, here a family enriched in the telencephalon and another one really highly enriched in the, in the hindbrain uh, regional identity. And we could actually confirm um, that this links to spatial enrichment of lineages um, when we did a spatial uh, transcriptomics on these eye tracer organoids. And so this really confirms that there is a clonality of the brain regions that develop in these brain organoids. And uh, we could then finally confirm this when we performed light sheet uh, measurements on these organoids, tracking them over time. So kind of a 4D uh, measurement um, and directly measuring the lineage relationship between cells. And uh, when we quantified this data, we could see indeed there is clonality of, of these luminal regions um, as the brain organoid develops. And so with this, I'm at the end, I'm happy to take questions if there's time and you can read more about both projects in these preprints. Thank you. And I should mention that uh, both projects have been performed in collaboration with uh, Gray Camp um, at ITD in Basel. Thank you. Thank you very much, Barbara. That was great. So um, we, we will wait for questions. Uh, just remind everybody that um, the video feed might be delayed uh, up to a few minutes, depending on where you are in the world. So, um, and also the, the speakers, if there are questions that come up that come up after you've, you've left, you can answer them using the comment feature in the platform. But while we're waiting, I just wanted to ask one question. Um, you know, I'm wondering how variable these processes are. We know that um, mutations occur during develop normal development, um, and you know, I, I guess we don't really know a lot about what you know how those affect development. But um, you know, do you? It seems like if you repeat your experiments on different organoids, you might see uh, you might get some information about that. I'm just, I'm wondering if we know about that. Yes. Yeah, so of course, in, in yeah. these. In these mosaic experiments, uh, also, uh, the, you know, every mutation is in a way different. And so um, uh, this is definitely something that we could um, address with these types of experiments. I think in order to really understand uh, the, heter the heterogeneity, we would maybe need uh, more data on, on different or on a lot of different batches. Um, but yeah, I think this is interesting to, to look at. Um, at um, the, the variability. We try to extract 
whatever, whatever is a homogeneous response by all the mutations that we induced, right? Um, but it would be interesting to also go into the analysis of the variability for each individual gene. Okay, great, thank you. So, yeah, just a reminder to speakers, if you see questions coming in after, um, you can answer them in the online chat or the, um, the, the question system. So I don't see any other questions, so thank you again, Barbara.